and we can do our part and give him a hand of praise and tell him, God, I love you. God, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Somebody didn't wake up, but he chose to wake us all up. And I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Come on, let's clap real hard and say, God, thank you. God, I love you. God, I praise you. I shout hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we just want to say we love you, God. Lord, we praise you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for this day. I'm not going to say a day we never seen because we already know we never seen it. But God, you gave it to us. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, we say have your way in this place this morning. Open up the floodgates and let it pour down on us. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, and we're going to praise and worship your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say we love you and we praise you. Amen. Yeah. 
Good morning, King Solomon. Good morning. Always a blessing to be in God's house and in his presence one more time. We want to welcome those of you who are visiting with us. We certainly are glad to see each and every one of you this morning, as well as our members. It's always good to see each other. Um, even with mask up, it's still good for us to be in God's presence. Those of you joining us Facebook Live, welcome. We are so delighted to have you joining us. Please note that we are here each Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school. We also have Sunday school via Zoom at 9 a.m. And then we'll commence our morning worship at 10 a.m. So please come out and join us. I did say we were wearing masks. We were temperature checking. And we're doing our best to social distance. So we are doing our part, and we are trusting God to do the rest. So please come out and join us at any given Sunday. And we hope and pray that God will bless and keep you always. Please let us remember all of our sick and shut-in members, whether they're at home or if they're in the hospital or if they're in a nursing home, as well as all of our bereaved families. And a special prayer go out for those in Afghanistan and Haiti and all of the things that they're experiencing right now. Let us be thankful for what we have, but let us continue to lift those in prayer that are in need. May God bless and keep you always. Let us stand. It's altar call time. You know what? I woke up this morning and I saw I had a roof over my head. I went to the refrigerator. I saw I had food in the refrigerator. I walked outside and saw my dogs. They were still running around. Also, I looked at my car. I have a car full of gas. I also have a job to go to. I also have a wife that's got a brand new car. And I just looked around. My children, ain't nobody in jail. Ain't nobody dead. I just looked up to the sky and said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for just have allowing me your grace and your mercy for having those things. Because I couldn't have did it without you. You gave it all to me. So let us bow our heads and go into prayer. Father, thank you right now for everything you have done for me over these years, Father. Thank you for everything that you've done for us, Father. Father, there's someone right now that might just be down and don't understand and just want you to come and talk to them, Father. Come talk to them, Father. Let them know you'll lift them up. First Thessalonians say, pray without ceasing and give thanks to everything, Father. Right now, they're giving thanks for food on the table, Father. Clothes on their backs, Father. A church to come to that, that teaches us, Father, how to live by faith and not by sight, Father. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you for these young people that are behind us singing, Father. They could be somewhere else, Father. Father, we thank you for the folks right now that love you and attend to you. Father, we want you to go out and pray to those that are standing on the corners, Father. Be with them. Be with the ones that's behind prison walls, Father. Be with the ones that their mind is just not right, Father. Help us, Father, to be better people. Put the armor of God around us, Father, that we might go out to a dying world and tell them about a living God, Father. Father, we thank you for all that you're doing in this pandemic, Father. Let somebody understand, Father, that they might be scared to take the shot, to get the shot so we can go back to what we used to, Father. There are better days coming ahead, Father, and we thank you for the better days. We thank you for what you're doing, and we honor you, Father. We honor you in love, Father, and we hope to overcome everything that this world is designed to do to us bad, and we just thank you for that. Father, we want to go into this next uh, next session, Father, where the pastor is going to preach and give us the word, put a crown around his head and give us wisdom, knowledge, and wisdom to help us through. And we say in these things, thank you, Father, in everything you do. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.
Amen. How about we stand to give our young people a big round of applause? Amen. Thank God for our young people in the choir, ushering, amen, and ministering in the house of God on today. Amen. She's, she's not done singing, huh? Get up, Grandpa. Amen. <laughs> Father, thank you for this another day. Amen. God, we're glad to be in your presence. We thank you for another opportunity. We thank you. This is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for keeping us and waking us this morning. Lord, we lift up people everywhere that are going through those in the hospitals, nursing homes, behind prison walls. We pray and loose your spirit into all those places. And Lord, when you call on us to go, teach us not to be stubborn. And when you tell us to go, help us to be obedient to just go. God, we thank you because if it had not been for you on our side, we wouldn't be here. So, Lord, we thank you for your grace. We pray you give us an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Open up the eyes of our understanding that we might know the truth. In your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would, open up your Bible to the book of Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse number 17. Proverbs chapter 30. Now, if you have a, uh, while you're looking, if you have a young adult, a millennial, millennial, the millennial generation, they tell me the millennial generation is age, uh, I guess, 17 or 18 through 40. If you have someone in that age group and they need to be preached to today and next week, tag them on Facebook. Take a second and tag them on Facebook. Maybe they're not your child, but maybe you got a hard-headed nephew or niece. Amen. I'm going to give you a second to tag them on Facebook, whether you're on live or whether you're here in the building. Tag somebody uh, in that generation that need to get delivered. Amen. Tag them. Or maybe you know somebody that's not a millennial, <laughs> but they still need to get delivered. Amen. Tag them and tag them also. And we pray that um, maybe after they wake up out the bed, because I know the club just closed a couple of hours ago. Maybe when they wake up, they'll look at your tag and uh, tune in later on. Isn't that right? Y'all remember them days? Sunday morning, uh, the church just wasn't happening for me. I mean, it just wasn't happening. I partied all night long until the break of dawn. And I own and I own and own and own and own. The beat don't stop until the break of dawn. And we were so bad at one point. We say on and on and on and on and on. The beat don't stop until your mama come home. Wasn't we leaks? I'm going to throw him under the bus with me. Amen. I regret I backslid because it cost me too much. But I try to take my errors and use them for ministry. Amen. Proverbs chapter 30, verse number 17, it says, The eye that mocks his father and scorns obedience to his mother, the ravens of the valley will pick it out, and the young eagles will eat it. I'm going to do a two-part series today and next week. Uh, and my subject is God's message to millennials. So today is part one, God's message to the millennial generation. You may be seated. If you're like me, 
you're frustrated with what's going on uh, in the world, and I'll say our community, as it relates to our young people. And I've talked to preachers, older people, younger people, and so many of us, self-included, are at our wits' end on what to do about uh, the condition of our young people. And the truth is, there is no quick answer. I'll say this, the answer does not lie with the police. The answer does not lie with the court system. The answer does not lie with the schools. I'll even go as far as to say we really don't need another program. I mean, we got programs everywhere to help young people uh, to be all they can be, so to speak. But like I said, if you're like me, you're frustrated. And it's near and dear to my heart because I have four millennial children. They fall within that generation. And they do pretty good. And I'm sure some of you, if you don't have a child, you have a grandchild, or maybe you have nieces and nephews that uh, are part of that generation. But once again, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of what's going on. And I've been praying to God just to use me on some small level to help. And I think you ought to want to help too. Amen. You ought to be more concerned about others and not just your household. Amen. And if you have something to offer to young people, you ought to offer it. Let's talk about the buzzards. When I was a little boy and growing up, my mom and grandmama would quote this scripture. I don't even think they know if they was quoting it, but they would use this scripture when referencing a hard-headed child. And they would say about a hard-headed child, I'm just going to let the buzzards pick them. And growing up, you like, well, what, what do you mean I'm going to let the buzzers pick them? Unbeknownst to me, later in life, I found out that that's in the Bible. And it's right here in Proverbs 17 and 30 because it says the ravens of the valley uh, will pick it out and the young eagles will eat it. Talking about the eye of a disobedient child. So... To all of my, my young people, and older people, y'all too, it, it apply to some of us. If you're having so much struggling and straining with life, I mean, ain't nothing working. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. It could be, and it probably is, the buzzards are picking you apart. I mean, don't nothing work. Every, listen, you, you always going through. I mean, we can set our watch to your drama. Once a quarter, we know you're going to be going through. For some of us, you go through every month. You go through for 30 days and you rest on one. And then September 1st, you're going through something else. If it ain't the family, if it ain't the money, if it ain't the job, if it ain't your car, if it ain't your co-workers, if it ain't your, your supervisor, if it ain't your family members, if it ain't your friend, you always going through something. Watch this here. And it seems like you never can get ahead. You can't keep a job. You can't pay your bills on time. You're riding around Little Rock with no insurance on your car. Come on, somebody. You bought the car in January, and you still got the temporary tag on it right now. Let me tell you a secret with you. A temporary tag is good for 30 days, not 30 years. Your cell, your cell phone number, 
was 777 last month. Now it's 8675309. Now it's 555-2212. Come the first of the year, it'll be something else. And your explanation is, is that there's something wrong with AT&T. You got issues with AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, they ain't even in business no more. They ain't even thinking about you. You change phones like we change our shoes. Everything seems to be dysfunctional in your life, young person. You're constantly going through. I'm telling you, that's not normal. And Solomon says in Proverbs 26, a curse without cause shall not alight. So he's telling you, there is a reason why you keep going through. And I'm telling you what that reason is for most most all of us. It's because the buzzards are picking your life apart. You got vultures eating on you and eating away at your life every day of your life. And you can't rest. You can't sleep. You're not satisfied. You're not content. You go from one job to the next job to the next job to the next job. On Monday, you want to work a job. On Wednesday, you want to be an entrepreneur. On Friday, you don't want to go work for nobody. And I'm telling you, it's something wrong with that picture. Because, listen, if God is in it, it will grow, glory to God. And if what you're doing is not growing, I'm going to tell you, God is not in it. And the reason you're miserable and can't make progress is because the buzzards is tearing your life up. Hmm? You get your paycheck, a buzzard eat it. You get a car, the buzzard make the oil run out. Hmm? So the drama in your life and the struggle in your life is in large part is due to the first half of this scripture. And the first half of this scripture says, the eye that mocks his father and scorns obedience to his mother, the raven's going to pluck it out. Let me make this, I guess this is a thesis statement, I don't know. The vast majority of your problem and my problem, whoever, is you are not listening to your mama and your daddy. Let me say it one more time. The vast majority of your problem is you're not listening to your mama and your daddy. Let's talk about your mama and daddy real quick. God gave you parents, first of all, so you could be here. He also gave you parents to teach you and to train you and to admonish you in the ways and affairs of how to deal with this life. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter how educated you are. You will never be smarter than your mama and your daddy. And I think everybody needs to get a hold of that fact. You will never be smarter than your mama or your daddy. Because watch this here. They was 25 when they had you, and you 25 today. But guess what? They 50 today. And God have mercy on a child who's 18 years old and their mom and daddy is 40 and you think you know more about this world than they do. It's absolutely impossible. Why is it impossible? It's impossible because I've been here longer than you. Hmm? So he's telling you if you mock your father's instruction and you scorn obedience to your mama, you mock your mama's instruction, then you are going to have problems. I guarantee you a lot of the stuff you're going through, if you listen to your mama, you wouldn't be going through it. I promise you, a lot of the drama that's in your life right now, if you would go back and remember what 
your mama and your daddy and your grandmama told and taught you, you would not have to deal with a lot of that stuff. Hmm? I know everybody want to hear this stuff. But I, I, got a, I got a secret for you. This is Bible 101. And those buzzards, listen here, the, they, they call them vultures <laughs> in the desert. Remember, Leaks, we've been in the, in the desert before. And watch this here. When, when something die out there in the desert, you, ain't, you don't have to worry about nothing. You, you be in the middle of the desert, ain't no life nowhere except for a few bugs and spiders running around. Let something drop dead. And you go out there the next day, you be like, where did all these birds come from? Can I share something with you, young people? See, vultures, they know when you stinking. And when you disobey your mama and, and daddy, there's a funk that comes on your life. When you are disobedient, there is an odor that comes out of your life. And watch this here. Every buzzard in town know where you at. And they will find you. And when they find you, they will begin to eat you and pluck on you until ain't nothing left for you. And you'll walk around miserable, mad, and upset, and you won't even know why. And the simple truth is, it's because you're hard-headed. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 1, he said, Children, anybody in here a child? Everybody a child, because you got a mom and daddy somewhere, even if they moved on, passed on. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for it's the right thing to do. Verse 2, he said, honor. Somebody say honor. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Let's talk about honor. When the judge comes in the courtroom, uh, the, the guy will say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, his honor, Judge Stephen Leakes. And what do we do? We stand up, we be still, and we pay attention. And the Lord is telling us today, everybody, young people, he's telling you today, when your mama and, they, and your daddy begin to talk, they just like E.F. Hutton, you ought to listen. And look what it says. When, when the judge comes in the room, what do we We stand still. That means when your mom and daddy begin to speak wisdom into your life, sit yourself down, put down your phone, cut off the television. And listen to what they have to tell you. And you might, well, my daddy ain't no good. Listen to him anyhow. You stand there, let judge come in. You stand there, everybody stand up. Everybody pay attention and don't nobody say nothing. Because we are there to, re to honor and respect the power. Come on. And that's the honor you ought to give your parents. I don't, even now, I don't like half the stuff my mama tell me. What you laughing at, Lisa, because you don't like everything Miss McFadden tell you too. I'm talking about Lisa McFadden, y'all. Huh? Lisa Miller, y'all know out there. She in here laughing. <laughs> we still don't like everything our mama, but I have learned in life, and I bet you have too, Lisa, that at least I'm going to sit still and listen to what, what she got to say. And I've learned to chew the grass and spit the sticks out. Hallelujah. But what does that mean? That means I might not have to adhere to everything she's saying, but she's saying something that I need to hear. So I honor and I learn how to listen with my mouth shut. Amen. Watch what he says. Somebody say honor. He says, honor your mother and your father. Behave like that with them. Verse 3 says, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. He says it's a promise. There is a promise with, that comes with honoring your mama and your daddy. And that promise is long life. And not just long life, but a good life. So here we go. Let's go back to the beginning with the buzzer. If you're not living a good life, listen, don't go try to find another job. Go back and find your mom and daddy. Come on. So, 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 so many of us are struggling because we just so hard-headed. And we won't do some of the simplest things that our parents have encouraged us to do. 
How many of y'all ever got in a mess and, you, and your folks told you don't go that way, but you did, went and did it anyhow, now you're in a mess? Hmm? How many of y'all have had drama in your life and, 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 and you wouldn't have had that drama if you'd have just listened? Hmm? How many of you all would be further along in life if you'd have just listened? See, we honor the judge. Watch this here. We honor the judge because he already know the law. We honor our parents because they already know the program. Come on. Watch this. They already been there and done that. So a lot of people who have left planet Earth early, they left because they were hard-headed. Your mama told you to quit selling drugs. Now you're on the 6 o'clock news laid out with a bullet in your head. Hmm? Then you want to come have a funeral and get somebody to lie over you. I remember growing up, they specifically told us, don't go hang out over there. Stay away from this person. Stay away from that person. Huh? Come in at a certain time at night. Come on. I remember I had to be, them street lights, I was 17 years old, and I still had to be in the house when them street lights came on. And eventually, about 16 or 17, I could be out a little later, but I showed up better be over somebody's house, and not just anybody's house, somebody's house that, that was already pre-approved with the parent program. Well, I'm going over so-and-so house. Okay, you better be over there. And then when you leave there, come right back here. And watch this here. I did my best to be obedient to that and honored that, and the Lord took care of me. I know people who disobeyed and went contrary to what their parents told them, and they're not here today. They're either not here, they're on drugs, they're in the penitentiary, they're miserable, they broke, busted, disgusted, and nine times out of ten can't be trusted. There's a promise of long life if you will honor your parents. There's a promise of a good life if you would just honor your parents. Young people, honor your mama and your daddy so you can live long and have a good life. You're trying to start a business and make that business be successful, but you won't even call your mama and your daddy. Come on. You don't even know their number. You don't check on them. Well, see, when I come out of high school, they didn't give me no money to go to college. You don't know the whole story, baby. They didn't have no money to send you to college. They did the best they could just to get your hard head self out of high school. Who you mad at? You don't know the whole story and what your folks went through to get you just to where you are today. So who are you mad at? God, deliver me from these kids who think they better than their mom and their daddy. So he says, honor, so you may live long and have a good life. So, good time. So, I, I prayed, Pastor Hall, and I, I asked the Lord to help me. Because this stuff is very muddy because there's, there's so many different variables. You know, I've, I think I've shared before about, you know, some parents, you got sorry parents too. Somebody else say amen. Some, some, some of these parents so sorry, I just be like, I'm glad you ain't my mama. Good Lord from heaven. So there are sorry parents. And if you're a sorry parent, I'm going to ask you to get yourself together. Huh? Your babies want to sing in this little youth choir, and you too trifling to bring them to practice. You got money in the bank. You won't teach them how to play the flute, the clarinet. You won't teach them, give them piano lessons. You won't take them to dance class, cheerleading. You barely get them to school on time. I'm encouraging you to be a better parent. Come on, somebody. God gave you them kids not just to be somebody to keep you company. God gave you them kids to train them up to love and appreciate him and to serve the world. That's why God gave them to you. They're not yours. So I pray and I ask the Lord, okay, give me something. And he gave, really, he just gave me one key. Somebody say key to give you this morning. Matthew chapter 16, verse number 17, 18, 19. The Bible is so deep. 
that you can extract lessons out of all of it continually on so many different subjects. In Matthew 16, verse 17, you all know this scripture, uh, where the Lord had asked uh, Peter, who do you say that I am? And, and Peter said, thou art uh, the Christ, the son of the living God. And in verse 18, Jesus said, and I also say to you, you are Peter, and on that rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You all are very familiar with that scripture where he talks about building the church on the rock. The rock in there is revelation knowledge of who Christ is. That's what he's talking about there. The rock is the revelation knowledge of who Christ is. And in verse 19, he says, and I will. Now, most places when Jesus talks, he talks in faith, past tense. But here he's talking future tense because he says, I will. You catch that? He prayed in, in John 17, he prayed in past tense. He said, I am no longer in this world. He said, they are in the world, but they're not of the world. So he, so he prayed and talked a lot of times in past tense. In this text, he's talking in future tense. He's talking in future tense because what he's getting ready to tell them is something that was going to happen. He said, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So this is what he was telling them. He was telling them there was going to come a time when I'm going to give you the, some keys to help you deal with heaven and earth. He had to make it future tense. Why? He made it future tense because he hadn't been to the cross yet. Here's the lesson. After he went through. Somebody say went through. Thank you, Holy Ghost. After he went through, he had something to give them. After, this couldn't be fulfilled until after he went through. Because until he went through, he didn't have power over death and hell. He didn't have all that. Uh-uh. He didn't have it. But after he went through and was crucified and got up after three days, he got up and said, all power's in my hand. After he did all that, now he could turn to his disciples and say, here go the keys. How could he do that? Because watch this here. I rose from the dead, and now since I went through, now I got something to pass on to you. I think some of y'all getting this. This is why y'all honor your parents. Because they have the keys to be successful in this life. See, you out here living your life with a sledgehammer, trying to beat these doors down. <clears throat> oh, I don't know how to make it, <clears throat> but if I keep working hard, I'll make it. <clears throat> I don't know how to get this done, but if I keep beating on it, I'm going to make it. <clears throat> and young people, you out here killing yourself. <laughs> Watch this here. Working hard. I'm not talking about hard, working, hard, working hard like you're supposed to. I'm talking about killing yourself trying to make it, working hard. When all you got to do is talk to your daddy, and he'll give you the key how to, instead of beat the door down, open the door. Can I just, let's watch this here. Ain't none of my kids should have no problem buying a house. Because I bought three of them, and I refinanced about four or five times every time that interest rate go down. So if you my child and you struggling getting the house, that's your fault. Because if you're out there trying to, well, how I get my credit fixed? I'm, not, I'm just talking to you. How I get my credit fixed? How I save the money? How do I get approved? How do I get my debt to income? How do I do all How do you, and you stress, and you, if you're stressing and straining over that stuff, why go through all of that when all you got to do is come to your mama and your daddy and we'll just give you the key and show you how to get it done, make it easy on you. Come on, somebody. You're killing yourself. You're paying somebody $100 a month to get your credit fixed. I can show you how to do that for free. 
You know that is a, py a, a pyramid scheme to trick you and get some money out of you. Come on. They're really not interested in fixing your credit. They're interested in getting you tied into a monthly fee. Come on. Well, you see the little sign out here on Chanel, uh, $100 a month, we fix your credit. I'd be like, give me $5 and I'll straighten it up for you. Give me a McDonald's burger, a Big Mac, and I'll, I'll show you how to fix your credit. How can we do that, Pastor Hall? Because we have the keys. Say that one more time. Hmm? Some of y'all parents is college graduates. And instead of listening to them to help you get through, you talking to your friends on campus. Huh? Some of them old bootleg lawyers. We call them barracks lawyers. I would tell you what we really call them, but I can't cuss in church. We call them outhouse lawyers. Now, you just, you know. Hmm? So you'd rather go through and listen to all these other folks who, who, who are in the same boat as you're in instead of talking to your parents who got all the keys. You know why you're struggling with your boyfriend? Because you didn't get a key from your mama how to, how to deal with a boyfriend. Your mama got all the keys on how to deal with a boyfriend. So when your mama say, baby, he ain't no good, you better get that key and open that door up. If your daddy and your mama say, boy, she ain't no good, you better get that key and open the door up. Already know. I know what time it is. We all been there and done that. But you got to, no, he going to be all right. He going to change. He going to be better. He going to get a job one day. And all the time, you you beating, using that sledgehammer, them buzzers steady picking. Psh, 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 psh. You know what them buzzers saying? She sure is stupid. Psh, 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 psh. He ain't working. He ain't putting no food in the house. He driving your car. You mad, you mad at us at work, you mad at your family, you can't get along with your friends, you ain't got no money, and you're out here fighting this battle with a sledgehammer when your mama tried to give you a key. Hmm? Am I wrong? Jesus said, I've been through something. Now I got some keys to give you. And watch this here. He said, the keys I'm going to give you, they'll work against heaven and they'll work against hell. If you listen to your mama, they'll teach you how to prosper in good times and in bad times. That's why you don't throw a bad parent out. You still go talk to your daddy. I don't care how no good he is. Go talk to him because I promise you he got something to tell you. Even if it ain't nothing more than don't end up like me. If he tell you, don't end up like me, that's a whole sermon right there in itself. Hmm? Well, my mama a crackhead. Go talk to her anyway. Find her on the street. Go talk to her. Hey, mama, how you doing? What's going on? Can I get you something to eat? And then let her, watch this here. Then the God, she might not even be saved, but there's a God in everybody. And the God in her from creation will rise up and speak wisdom into your life. Go find your mom and your daddy. Get rid of this stuff. Tell me. And if you're a parent, criticize the other parent, I'm going to tell you to sit your raggedy self down. He might not be paying child support, but he's still a daddy. Huh? She might not be paying. We know women pay now. She might not be helping, but she's still the baby's mama. Amen. And you have no right to turn your children against the other parent. And can I be honest with you? That's why you're struggling. Because you're violating Ephesians 6. You don't have a right to violate the scripture just because they give you child support. Well, he ain't ever done nothing for you, girl. And you, you know, you can't count on him. Well, shut your mouth. That's why you going through and can't get nowhere. You running your mouth too much. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. If he did raggedy, then just let him bury his own self. But don't you put your mouth on it. Hmm? A lot of folks need to hear this. Huh? Young people get the keys to go through life. Quit struggling. 
You're struggling because you haven't got the keys. You get the keys from your parents. Maybe it's a grandmama. Maybe it's a, it could be an aunt. It could be an uncle. Listen, go and talk to these people and get wisdom and learn how to deal with this world. You can't learn this world in 17 years. You can't do it. 20 years, you can't. I'm 55. I'm still trying to figure this thing out. Good Lord. Because every time you think you got the world pinned down, it moves again. Huh? You don't believe me? Ask your folks. Hmm? Ask your folks. Ask your folks. Watch this. It, it amazes me how somebody 50 needs to borrow $20. I'd be like, you 50, borrow $20. So my, I've learned to analyze. I say, okay, you've been here 50 years, and you ain't got $20. I mean, even if you went through bankruptcy, uh, divorce, lost your job, you still ought to have twenty dollars. So I'd be doing the math, and I say fifty divided no, no, twenty dollars divided by fifty, and that come out to about a dollar seventy-five cent a year. I mean, you can't save a dollar a year. I mean, a dollar and thirty-five, forty cents a year. You 40 and then, let me borrow 10, bro. Bro. So I like to talk to these people. I'd be like, okay, what's going on, bro? $10? I mean, if I don't give you $10, the world coming to an end for you. Huh? I bet you if you talk to them long enough, they disobeyed their mom and their daddy. I don't know a person. I'm t I don't know a person who obeys and honor their parent. It's not blessed. Now, they may not walk in all of it, but for the most part, they're blessed. Jesus said, I can give you keys because I went through. You obey and honor your parents because they already been through what you're getting ready to go through. Hmm? Don't you fool yourself. You need your parents. You need, if your grand parents pass on, your grandmama raised, you need your grandmama. Watch this. You need your stepmama, stepdaddy, some of us. Hmm? Everybody wasn't raised by their natural parents. Some of you got stepdad, stepmama. You need their wisdom. You need them to pour into you. But you got to take time and go sit at the feet of your source. Hmm? So I'm learning now. I'm learning. I might not want to hear everything they got to say, but I'm going to listen, and I'm going to extract out of what they're telling me what I need to make my life better. Is that all right? Is that all right? Amen. Next week, I'm going to be specific about certain things. This is the foundation, honoring your parents. Honoring your parents. And remember what I said in the beginning. If life is picking you apart, you need to go back to the foundation. A lot of you all going off to college, listen, you better remember what your mom and daddy taught you. Everybody on that campus don't love you. Watch this. Listen to me. Some of what your mom and daddy told you can keep you from getting raped in that dorm. You in the dorm, it's dark. You walk across the parking lot in the dark, huh? You walk around campus, it's nighttime. Are you by yourself? You better go back and listen to what your mom and daddy taught you. Hmm? I'm telling you, that wisdom will be a fence around you. Amen. And it's just like the Holy Ghost. He'll bring to your remembrance what they told you. I'm 55, and I still get up every night before I go to bed and make sure all the doors are locked. I don't go to bed unless all the doors are locked, and I know that they are locked because that's what they taught me. Because we grew up with folks kicking in the doors, stealing all your televisions. Stand on your feet. So I do what they tell me, 
And I add my own and get me a pistol and I do their part. But I got my part too. Me and the Holy Ghost add an addendum to their program. <laughs> All right. We we put an addendum. We put an addendum in there. It's called an addendum to the program. See, they got the program. I just put this little addendum sheet in there. Yeah, we're gonna put, you know. So that way if they if they don't honor my locks, then we gonna honor them. And you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know Christ, this is what I'm this is what I'm telling you. A little lower over there. If you don't know Christ, you need a savior. Okay. Listen. Jesus died for your sin. Amen. He paid the price so that you have a right to eternal life. Young people and old, I want to encourage you. If you don't know Christ, accept him before it's everlasting too late. Amen. He hung, bled, and died on Calvary's cross. The Bible says after three days he got up with all power in his hand. Amen. He paid the price for your eternal life. The Bible says in Hebrews 9.27, it is appointed unto men once to die and after that the judgment. We're all going to give an account of our life. And you cannot stand before God and survive without Jesus on your side. So if you're here and you don't know Christ, come over to my left. We have somebody that will minister to you. If you're on Facebook and you want to give your life to Christ, you want to unite with this church or whatever church, send us a message. I think I shared last. We had a young lady got saved right here on Facebook a couple weeks ago. She's getting baptized on first Sunday. Amen. Others are reaching out for prayer, some to join the church. Listen, don't be afraid to reach out, and we'll have somebody call you before it's too long, okay? So that's it. We're getting ready to go. Amen. If you don't know Christ, let me say it again. I know we do things a little different with the pandemic, but the blood still works. Amen. If you don't know Christ, make that commitment today. Make that commitment. I'm sure, I promise you your life will never be the same. Amen. Here we go. Say it with me. We walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you this day and always.